This coming week, the New York Times, in partnership with the Pulitzer Center, will publish Losing Earth, a single-themed issue of its Sunday magazine. The topic is climate change and the scientific discoveries and decisions made in the decade between 1979 and 1989. Writer-at-large Nathaniel Rich centers his story on two men, Rafe Pomerantz, an environmental activist, and former NASA scientist James Hansen, one of the first to warn the world about greenhouse gases and global warming. It didn't have to be this way. In the decade 1979 to 89, we knew already the Earth really is getting warmer. It was not a statistical fluke. We should have begun to take the actions that would have avoided a tragedy. Author Nathaniel Rich joins us now from New Orleans. Uh, first, tell us how close did we come? How different was the climate for climate conversations? It was remarkably different and in, in many ways and remarkably the same. Uh, by 1979, there was a, a strong consensus uh, within the scientific community about the nature of the problem. Uh, the fundamental science hasn't really evolved since then. It's only been refined, really. Um, there was no uh, politicization of the issue. Uh, throughout the decade, a number of prominent Republicans were leading the charge uh, to insist on a, a major uh, climate policy. And industry, which, which we now blame for much of our uh, paralysis, uh, had not turned against uh, science or, or truth. Um, and if anything, uh, especially in the early part of the decade, was engaged in trying to understand the problem and determine solutions. And so over the course of the decade, um, the issue rose to major national uh, attention and a, uh, a process for a global treaty was in hand and, um, and we failed at the, at the end of that to sign a binding agreement. You know, so why did we fail? What, what was it that created that paralysis that we're so familiar with today? Well, there's, there's a sort of a simple uh, political answer, uh, a very narrow answer, I suppose, you could, you could make, which is that in the Bush administration, the first uh, George Bush administration, uh, his chief of staff, former governor of New Hampshire, John Sununu, uh, who was an engineer, a PhD, was very skeptical about the science of, of uh, global warming and he th suspected that it was being used by a kind of a cabal of, of folks who wanted to suppress growth and uh, economic advancement and, and, and all of that. And, and he managed to win an internal fight within that White House um, against action. That's, that's kind of the most limited possible answer. And, and the piece tells the story of that you know, political conversation. Um, I think the larger, the larger answer has to do with how we as a species try to reckon with um, vast uh, technological problems that will only affect folks uh, decades or generations from now. Of course, that's not the case anymore, but in, in the early 80s, that, that was how the, the conversation was being um, mm -hmm. constructed. And so I think uh, there's a kind of larger uh, conversation to be had about why why we were so unable to tackle this when we had a great opportunity to do so, and then there's the more narrow conversation about the the inside politics of, of of the matter. You write at one point that the American Petroleum Institute in the late '50s and '60s they were conducting their own research and coming to the same conclusions that the scientists were. And you also point out that even the CIA in 1974 had written a report looking at climate change basically as a national security threat or a global security threat. By the mid '50s, you had top government scientists um, speaking about the issue. You had major articles in you know, Life magazine and Time. So it wasn't just industry that was following it. It was at the highest levels of government. Uh, Lyndon Johnson sent a special message to Congress uh, in 1965 that discussed the problem. So the idea that, that we've only understood it in recent years is one of the, the worst examples we have of the cultural amnesia uh, of this country and especially around this, this issue. You know, one of the meetings that you describe in great detail starts to get to the same challenges that we have. You see people trying to water down language, not wanting to make a decision today, leave the decision for others. 
there's still uh, a basic discomfort with trying to propose a drastic uh, transformation or immediate transformation of the, our whole energy economy, which is to say our economy. And so even folks who agree um, on every aspect of, of, the, of the issue, uh, the science and, and the politics, still were not able to negotiate even the most basic uh, statement uh, of, of purpose. And, and I think that uh, we still see that, that problem today, frankly. Author Nathaniel Rich, writing for the New York Times Magazine. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. The report is called Losing Earth. It'll be published online later this week and in the magazine next weekend.